Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk, as we continue on in our look at the Sermon on the Mount. We're here, we being mm-hmm. Alice and I, who you know, and this is, introduce your sister to everybody to the world. This is Diane. Ah. Alice's sister, yes. <laughs> Mary Ellen is over there with <clears throat> Benji, watching Benji. Yes. Keeping dog control. Dog control, hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so we're continuing on. And we had just, in our last uh, program, finished up the Beatitudes, talking about persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to continue on, and today we're going to look at, begin to look at the salt and the light. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is about bringing God's presence. Because the Beatitudes, the whole Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has gathered his disciples, and he is teaching his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now, other people may be looking and standing by, crowds. Sitting. But specifically, Jesus has said he is talking to his disciples. Mm -hmm. So now what he's doing, and this is at the beginning of his ministry, he is preparing them to go out and be the salt and the light. Mm -hmm. Right? This is, you know, Paul wrote to Timothy and said that all Scripture is God-breathed and profitable for for what? For reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Mm-hmm. This is the training in righteousness. Okay? So, salt and light. Mm-hmm. But before we go on, first of all, mm-hmm. I'm going to pray. Oh, yes. Because, Father, we need yes. your blessing as we gather in your word, Lord God. Lord, that you would open our ears, that you'd open the eyes of our heart, that we would see wonderful things in your word. Lord, that your spirit would minister your word to us and make it the reality of our life. We praise you and thank you for your word, above all, for your word who is made flesh, your son, Jesus Christ. So we thank you as we start this in Jesus' name, Father. So, Amen. And before we do go on any further, we're going to talk about elements and compounds. We're going to talk about heavenly bodies like the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I want to make note of the fact that I am neither a chemical engineer nor do I hold a doctoral degree as an astrophysicist. Mm, right. Let's get that clear. However, <laughs> I am consulting with the one who made all the elements yes. and all of the stuff in the sky. The author. The author, right? Because it says in the first chapter of John, it begins, the Gospel of John begins by saying, in the beginning was the Word. Talking about Jesus. Mm-hmm. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Mm-hmm. He was in the beginning with God. <laughs> All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Right? right? Mm-hmm. So Jesus knows more about salt than all of the biochemists who have ever lived combined. That's right. He invented it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jesus knows more about the stars and the planets than all of the astrophysicists who ever looked into the sky because he spoke it all into existence. Mm, yes. He said to Job, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades or loose the cords of our Orion? Can you lead forth a constellation in its season and guide the bear with her satellites? Do you know the ordinances of heavens or fix their rule over the earth? Were you there when I put the stars in place? Right? So understand that, that Jesus Christ is the author of everything when it comes to when we talk about physical things. See, I want to... And, we're going to talk about these in detail, scientific stuff. Mm-hmm. And the re- there's a reason for doing that, right? That we have to prayerfully consider what Jesus said, but we also need to prayerfully consider what he made. And the reason for that is, Paul wrote in, in Romans and said, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. So they are without excuse. Right, right. Romans one twenty. You see, so we can learn about Jesus Christ Through by getting creation. an understanding yes. of what he has created. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't it, David, and this verse is so, so terribly important in my life, right? Mm-hmm. David learned much about the Lord when he took time to 
consider thy heavens and the work of your fingers and the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. That's what he said in Psalm 8, 3. I mean, lots of people have looked at the moon. Have you considered it as his work? Because the heavens proclaim the glory of God. Mm -hmm. All right? So now let's get into it. Salt and light. It says in Matthew 5, 13, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Right? Yeah. Okay. And as I said in the last chapter, the last program we did, mm -hmm. we talked about persecution. Persecution was a devil's attempt to remove the influence of Christians from the world. That's what persecution is all about, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus is making that transition from the Beatitudes mm -hmm. into preparing to send the people out to, to, to represent him. Mm. You're the salt of the earth. Mm. The first thing you have to note about salt is this. It's a compound, mm -hmm. right? Sodium chloride. It takes two elements to make salt, right? The first element, sodium, it's, it's abundant in the world, but it's never found by itself. Okay, it's always combined. In com it's always in, uh, in combination. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's, not, it's just not found alone, mm -hmm. right? This is about Jesus and us. We're supposed to be a compound. Right. And like yeah, salt, well. sodium chloride, you know, we want to do a class thing here, get a piece of salt, and let's try and separate the sodium from the chloride mm -hmm. and a piece of salt. Can't do it. No. And that's why Paul could say, I know nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing yeah. can separate us from God. Mm -hmm. He's got us in the palm of his hand where no man can snatch us out. Mm -hmm. It's that compound, us and Jesus, right. the powerful that God compound. uses to change the world. Mm -hmm. All right? Salt serves many important functions. Mm -hmm. We don't really, because in, in our modern world, we don't really perceive the importance of salt, okay? Mm -hmm. We want to talk about that. First of all, it, it stimulates thirst. That's yes. Right? Salt will make you thirsty. Mm -hmm. It adds flavor to things. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a preservative. Yes. And it's also a cleansing or purifying agent. That's right. Okay? That's right. mm -hmm. So for thousands of years, those qualities have given salt its incredible value in virtually every society and in every age. Mm -hmm. It's been used as currency. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Roman soldiers were at times paid yeah, with salt. salt. Mm -hmm. That's where our word salary mm -hmm. comes from. It comes from the Roman word for, for, salt. for salt, right? Because right. and, and it was so valuable. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the word, you've heard the expression, you know, that man's not worth his salt. salt. That's an old expression. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was because it was that's how they valued things. Mm -hmm. There's... I looked online, and this is going back some time, and there's a, a MR Block Salt Archive. Mm -hmm. And it says, traditionally, the study of man has been based on the study of his tools and artifacts, ideas and religion. <clears throat> it has failed to take into account those items essential to man's survival. Mm -hmm. Such an item is salt. salt. Mm -hmm. It's been neglected almost totally by historians and archaeologists. The establishment of early settlements, the rise and decay of civilizations, demographic shifts of populations, and, and the development of agriculture were intimately related to the immediate availability of salt. Mm -hmm. The power to control a population's salt was, a, was power over life and death. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, there's a, a trade magazine, or a Science Tribune, and they said, and this is going back a number of years, they said, it, Human life, is human life without salt imaginable? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Salt symbolizes life itself. Basic physiological functions depend on a balance between salts and liquid in the body. Mm -hmm. When the balance is upset, disease will occur. Exactly. Yeah. Salt has been an essential, virtually omnipresent part of medicine for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. It's been used as a remedy, a support treatment, a preventative measure. Mm -hmm. It's been taken internally or applied topically and been administered in exceedingly wide varieties of forms, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, we just think of it today. It's like, oh, don't, don't take too much salt. Don't, and, and, well, that's uh, a big thing today. But yeah. for, for thousands so, of years, life was based around so. the availability well, of salt. The human body has, I, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's like a large percentage. Well, you better have salt. some. I'll yeah. tell you why, okay? Yeah. So let's talk about thirst. You know, you know what the world says? The world says, <laughs> you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. That's right. Give them enough salt and make them, and make them thirsty. Okay. 
Well, that's, that's the way it should be with us and the world around us. Our lives should make evident the work of the Lord. The difference he's made in our life makes each of, in, when, when he was making us a new creation, that should cause people to want what we have, mm. all right? Because we have something they don't have. Mm. That new life that is filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we're new creations of them. Mm-hmm. By definition, is far different from what the world has filled with the deeds of the flesh. And you know what? If you look at the deeds of the flesh, go to, you know, and look. Anger, malice, I mean, there are all these bad things. And you look yeah. at the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the love, the love, the joy, the peace. People should see that in our lives. They should see that and be drawn to it. They should be thirsting for it. Because we have what they don't have. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Right. And once a person gets that thirst, then perhaps they will hear what the Lord promised through the prophet Isaiah. He said, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You have no money. Who have no money? Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Right? Mm-hmm. Come. He is. Remember the account of him with the, the Samaritan woman at the well? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. He's standing there at this well with the Samaritan woman. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water, the well, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. The water I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Yeah. John 4, 13, 14. You know, it's like somehow we've thought of evangelism as we go out and, you know, it's like, oh, I wish these people. If people could see the abundant life of Christ in us, mm-hmm. they, they, there, should be a, there should be a thirst growing in them yeah. to have what we have. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've seen that. Listen, you know, we've been doing this a long time. I saw that happen with my very own father. Yes, yes. My father was unsaved, you know, after I had been saved. And, mm-hmm. um, he thought I went nuts. When I got saved, he literally thought that I went nuts because my life so radically, drastically changed. Yes. And by the way, people should be able to see the difference God's making in your life. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I, I used to, he was down living in Florida and I was living up in New York and I would speak to him on the phone. He'd come up to visit us because he, he literally thought I came, was going nuts. So he came up to see what. Well, he could rescue me. <laughs> and one night I was praying with him on the phone and he said, you know, he said to me, I want what you have. Mm-hmm. And I prayed with him on that phone mm-hmm. that night to receive Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. First he thought I was nuts. And then mm-hmm. he saw, he didn't see, he didn't see me become a better person. He saw a better person in me. He oh, saw Jesus, Jesus in me and he wanted it. All right. Yeah. That should be what we experience. The saints of God here on earth who have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Mm. We are to add flavor to the world around us. Mm-hmm. Flavor. Mm-hmm. Salt adds flavor. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And by the way, you know, if you have, I don't know, a hamburger, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you want to add some salt to it. You don't take a salt shaker and pour the whole thing on it. No, no. You, know, you know, it's amazing how little oh, salt need. can change the taste That's of something. Flavor. That's right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that one believer can change the flavor of the world around him. Mm. Okay? Historically, it's been common in the process of the Lord blessing his people that unsaved people around them get blessed too. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Look at Joseph. God blessed Joseph, and he he had a plan. Mm -hmm. God always has a plan. Mm -hmm. So Joseph... His brothers throw him down a well, sell him off into slavery, and he winds up in Egypt. But God had a plan, yes, right? Yes. But Joseph was blessed. I mean, look at the position he came to in Egypt. Yeah. Right? But that blessed that blessed his brothers. And as a matter of fact, that's what he said. You know, said you meant this, said to his brothers, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. Because he preserved the life of his brothers. But you know what? The Egyptians got blessed because of one righteous man, Joseph. Yeah. They, he was the one that rescued them from that famine that would have happened had he not been there, right? Mm-hmm. Think about Paul and Silas when they were thrown into jail in Philippi, right? Acts 16. Yes. Mm-hmm. God blesses them because of their faithfulness. They're in this terrible, terrible prison. And around midnight, it says that they're singing praises to God. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, God got excited about that because mm-hmm. Jesus said, you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. Yes. When Paul and Silas were confessing confessing Jesus before men, 
Jesus, Jesus is standing Jesus. in heaven saying, Father, look at my mm -hmm. look at my servant Paul. Hallelujah. So God the Father blessed them. But you know what? When God shook the earth, and shook yeah. the earth he did, mm -hmm. and the prison gates flew open, all of the prison gates, all of the cells yes. flew open. Yes. Not just Paul and Silas's. Right. Everybody around them was set free that night. And when that when that jailer came to Paul and Silas and said, What must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Wanna know something? He was blessed. Mm -hmm. His family was blessed. Yes. They came to eternal life yes. because of the faithfulness and what God's work of, in Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, you know, you know what it says? If you don't know what it says, mm -hmm. please go spend some time and read it. Because it's about obedience. It's yes. about obeying God. When you obey God, when you hear his voice, when you obey him, yes. he'll bless you. Yes. That's his promise. Yes. And God work, watches over his word to perform it. Mm -hmm. But not only will he bless you, Says so he'll bless you. Oh, he'll bless you good. He'll bless you upside, downside. Mm -hmm. That's a paraphrase. But he'll bless you going out. He'll bless you coming in. He'll bless you working. But he'll bless your wife. He'll bless your children or your husband. Mm -hmm. He'll bless your kitty cats and puppy dogs. He will bless everything around you. Because you bring flavor to the world around mm -hmm. you. You know, the General Electric Company, which is one of the biggest corporations in the world. Mm -hmm. I actually did consulting work for them. They used to use the corporate slogan, we bring good things to life. Yeah. But in point of fact, it is the disciples of Jesus Christ who bring good, good things to life. Right. We bring the knowledge of his presence. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians 2.14. And then it goes on in 2.15 to say, For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Mm -hmm. We, the temples of the Holy Spirit, are the air freshener in this stinky world. Yeah. That's why it should be so exciting to be a Christian, to walk with Jesus Christ, to walk in the Spirit of God, should be so exciting. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. That's not about stuff. He said it's not about stuff. That's right. Abundant life is to have this, this experience of, of being used by God, the Almighty God, mm -hmm. being used by Him to touch the world around you and lives around you. That's what I think. Salt preserves things. Yes. I mean, for thousands of years, they, as a matter of fact, there are still places, absolutely, they, they use salt yeah. to preserve. Yeah. You, how do you, you know, you salt meat yeah, to right. preserve it, right? Mm -hmm. The church is the preservative. Yes. Whatever is good in this world remains because of the combined presence of the Lord and the church he inhabits. Mm -hmm. That is that compound, right? Yes. That's that compound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if that compound is removed, well, think about what Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica. He said, and you know what restrains him. Talking about the evil yes. one, talking about the anti Antichrist. Mm -hmm. You know what restrains him mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. so that in this time he will be revealed. Mm -hmm. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Oh, yes. yes. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Yes. Second Thessalonians 2, verses 6 and 7. Yes. What, what restrains him? Holy the, Holy the Holy Spirit. But you know what? We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're the container for the Holy Spirit here yes. on earth. When the Holy and, and by the way, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. He can't take the Holy Spirit out and leave us behind. Mm -mm. He oh, can't do that. Right. He goes, we go. <laughs> but when we go, when the church is yeah. gone, you know what's left? Hell on yeah. earth. That's Hell right. on earth. Yeah. Now the thing is, you know, Jesus Christ talk about in Matthew 24 he told his disciples that in the last days mm -hmm. many will fall away yes. like apostasy. and, and uh, two verses later he says and lawlessness will increase mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. now do you not see the connection mm -hmm. as if the, if the church diminishes and there is a falling That's away right. there are less Christians That's there's right. less preservative yes. so as that goes lawlessness it creeps comes. in yep. And you don't have to look far to uh -huh. see lawlessness uh -huh. increasing all around us in this world today. Right. It's a cleansing or purifying agent. Salt is. Interestingly, in 2 Kings 2, verse 21, talking about Elijah, it says, He went out to the spring of water and threw salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have purified these waters. There shall not be from there death or unfruitfulness any longer. That's when the water was poisoned. Right. 
right? And they're, they're, the, the prophets there are crying out, oh, you know, my master, we're dying here. So he throws salt into the water. Mm-hmm. Did the salt purify it? Well, God used the salt mm-hmm. to purify it because he's, he did this, this as a is, foreshadowing. Right. We purify the world. Yes. Take you know, us away, and I promise you, you wouldn't want to see world. what the world looks like without, without the saints of God and the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. in it now. Okay. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Think about the ministry that you have. Yes, yeah. you have. You didn't have to go to the seminary. No. You didn't have to go to Bible college. Right. But I promise you, when you said yes and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. you became a powerful minister yes. of God and the things of God here in this world today. Mm-hmm. Yes. Each and every one of us. Right. It says in 2 Corinthians that, that God works through, the Holy Spirit works through each one individually as he wills. Mm-hmm. We all, you all, have a ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. However he chooses to use you. But what he is doing is he is working his blessings, his promises, through you in this this world today, which is becoming increasingly dark. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that when we get to the light. Mm -hmm. But Jesus goes on and he says that the salt has become tasteless. Mm -hmm. I don't know it would taste no Soul nope. without taste, flavor without flavor. Right. That's so what it says. Mean, yeah. In the in Teen Games, I think it says without savor, right. without flavor, right? Yeah, that's what it, it says. Just, the King James says, if, like if the salt sand. has lost savor. Mm. But it's inter- in- interesting to, in, to look at the Greek word mm-hmm. that God chose to use, that it's lost its flavor, right? Okay. The Greek word is moreno or maraino. Moreno. And that's translated to, to make all through the Bible as to make something foolish. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, because it says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give mm-hmm. thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and f- their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Mm-hmm. And that's that word. Mo Raino. Romans one twenty one. Okay, is that okay? Does anything pop up in your head when you hear that word, that Greek word? Where is the where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Moreno. It comes from the Greek word, and that's where we get the English word moron. Okay, so how does it lose its flavor, or more literally, how do we become morons? Mm. By contamination. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's how salt. I mean, salt. Yeah. yeah. Salt has to be contaminated. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can leave salt there all day long, and it's not going to go bad. Salt yeah. doesn't go bad. Yeah, something has to touch. Contaminated. It. All right. In in storage of salt in the olden times, the salt on the bottom of a pile. Now, you know, I don't know. You know, as a matter of fact, we were just recently up in upstate New York, where they have some of the largest salt mm-hmm. mines in the United States. They yeah. still and they're still working these giant salt mines. Yeah. And they pile it. You know, well, the salt on the bottom of the pile on dirt will often become contaminated by the dirt. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. and it becomes unusable because it's can become contaminated by the dirt. Right. Now, I've been in in restaurants, for example, where some Moreno uh-huh. <laughs> might have put sugar in the salt shaker, oh, yes. right? Okay. Yes, they've added sugar right. to the salt. And now it's not good for anything. It's not no, good to right. salt. It's not good to no, sugar, sugar, right? Nothing. You just draw it out to be trampled Close underfoot. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. We need to understand oh. this. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's the only thing that contaminate you? The world. Mm. That's right. But you are sealed in the Holy Spirit. Yes. The the real you. Now I'm going to tell you the something. Spirit. The, this part of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not sealed, but, no. but the, this part of me, yes. we have been sealed in the Holy Spirit. Yes. And if I were to go right now into the kitchen and come out here with a can of corn mm-hmm. or peas or a can of ice cream, a can of something, mm-hmm. okay, and you could take dirt and pour it all over that thing, mm-hmm. and you, you know what, you just blow it off, open the can, and everything's still pure. As long as we are walking in Christ and, and walking in the Spirit, mm. We're sealed. The world can't contaminate you unless you choose to open up and go out right, into the world. Right, right, And if you love the world and the things of the world, you know what? Yeah. You have not the love of the Father within you. That's 
We have to be prayerful to understand that we have a responsibility. If, you have, if you're storing food, you have to keep it from being contaminated. Right, right. It's covered. You always cover things when you want to store them. So, so, he, so Okay, so here's something for you religious folk. Okay. Are you religious out there? Huh? You go to church on Sunday, and I, uh, dress up, put on your Sunday go-to-meetings, and, you know, religion's not a bad thing, except the way it's practiced by so many people. What What's good religion look like? Well, here is pure and undefiled religion in the eyes of God the Father. It says in the, in the letter to James, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Do you visit widows and orphans? Well, no, wait a minute. If it doesn't know, it's the first thing pure and undefiled religion is, is about your relationship with one another. Right. Righteousness is about your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Religion is about that, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says, and keep oneself unstained from the world. That's pure and undefiled That's religion. pure and undefiled religion. Keep yourself unstained from the world. The devil can't get in. He can only get you to come out. You are in a fortress, my rock, my fortress, yeah. my God, in whom yeah. I trust. Shelter the Most High. You are in the shelter of the Most High, mm -hmm. the shadow of the Almighty, the shelter of the Most High. The devil, all he can do, he can't. He has no power. He can't break. He can huff and he can puff and he can't blow the wall down. I promise mm -hmm. you, he can't break down the walls that God has built yeah. around you. Right. He can just try to talk you out. He can talk you out. That's what he tries to do. He sets a trap. You are on a path of righteousness. A narrow path is what Jesus said. That's right. And he sets snares for you. But God says, I'll, pr I'll protect you from the snares of the trap. Yes. Yes. How does he set a snare? You know, anytime you set a snare, what you do is you, I, I, you know, I went to a survival school in the, in the military. You either, you put it on a trail that you know that, the animals you're trying to trap are constantly using back and forth, mm -hmm. or you, you're off that trail, but you put bait there, mm -hmm. and the you know the, the animal will come to the bait. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, we're on a path that the devil can't get on, right. that narrow path of righteousness. So what he has to do is off that path, on those paths that are wide and easy mm -hmm. that lead to destruction, set the trap. he'll set a trap. Mm -hmm. What bait does he use? What what bait would he use in your life? Well, you know what. Whatever He'll use what you tell him is attractive to you. He's out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe the devil can read minds, but he can listen to what you're saying. So if all the time you talk about, oh, look at that, look at that, I want one of them, I want one of them. And he says, hmm, hmm, and he'll get one of them and put it off the side of the, the path to get you to come out. Mm -hmm. He can't bust in, but he'll try over and over and over to get you to walk out. To walk away from Jesus Christ oh. where you become vulnerable because as long as you are as it says in the Psalms mm -hmm. in that place where you are in the shelter of the Most High the shadow mm -hmm. of the Almighty mm -hmm. you know what nothing will touch you go read it go read Psalm 92 mm -hmm. no plague will come near your tent nothing will touch you the arrows will fly by you mm -hmm. if you stay in the protection of the Lord God Almighty yes. he is a mighty tower hallelujah Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Mm. Glad you're here to wake me up. Okay. Sorry, how can I say 92? 92 is not bad, by the way. I was just going to look at 92 okay. to see that. But Psalm 91 is what I had in mind. That's correct. to read that one, too. All right. Think about being that salt. Think about being used by God to do all of those things because that's what He wants for your life. He wants to use you that you might be blessed and that he might be glorified mm -hmm. and lives around you would be touched. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we thank you that mm -hmm. you can use us, that you choose to use us for the glory of your name. Mm -hmm. We praise you and thank you, Lord, that you can still use the foolish to shame the wisdom of the wise, that you can use us in our weakness, that your strength might be shown forth. We praise you and bless your holy name, Father, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye. So I cherish Till my trophy